Uh, my name is Sterling Quinn. I'm a, a doctoral student at Penn State University in the Department of Geography there. Um, one of the nice things about grad school is you can kind of pick a topic and just drill into it for a couple years and, and explore something that's fun to you. And what could be more fun than OpenStreetMap? Um, so I'm, I'm happy to have a chance to share some of my recent work. And uh, thank you for uh, taking the time to, to listen. Um, one of the topics I've been working on recently is studying OpenStreetMap in smaller cities. Um, typically, whoop, about 50 to 100. It already went to sleep. I've only been talking for uh, 30 seconds. <laughs> Don't do that. Um, but anyway, looking at smaller cities, and particularly to answer the question that when we look at OpenStreetMap, whose influence are we seeing? Uh, if we take an envelope and we just were to to boil down how many users that was and why they were there and uh, why, what brought them there. What could we learn about that uh, from the data itself? Um, small cities are, uh, provide a lot of great questions to ask about OSM. Um, beyond just even how many people influence the map, but um, are they attracting their own local mappers that, are, that have that rich uh, knowledge of the place? And then if not, um, if people are coming from afar, then why are they even mapping in this place? What brings them there? And what role does the pride of place play in uh, some of these areas where there may be fewer local mappers? Well, when we look at OpenStreetMap in the United States in particular, we see a map full of data. There's uh, tiger data that's been brought in. Uh, we see the streets. And it's a little bit harder to tell which places are are more richly built out and which ones are not to the untrained eye. Um, and so why do we even care about studying OpenStreetMap in the small cities? Well, increasingly OpenStreetMap is being used in apps that are expected to have uh, national, if not global, coverage. Uh, when we see it as a base map in apps uh, like Craigslist, I can tell you there's lots of people in central Pennsylvania in the rural small towns trying to sell junk on Craigslist, just like there are in the big cities. Um, some things are universal. Uh, same thing with cross-country routing and logistics flows that are expected to cross the country. Uh, they go through these towns, and so OSM cannot afford to be just an urban map. Uh, it needs to have, have that full coverage. And that applies also for humanitarian situations where you know, a natural disaster might strike in a, uh, a less populated area as well as a highly populated one. Um, I'm interested in regional cities of regional importance that may have between 50 to 100,000 people. Uh, maybe because I grew up in one. Uh, one that I selected for this study is right in the middle of the United States, uh, Salina, Kansas, a population 48,000. But I'm also studying some other towns of this size and geography within South America and Canada, um, which I'll show a little bit today. Uh, if you look at the map in Salina, you'll see that it's got um, the roads as we would expect, but also some extra data of railroads, parks, rivers, and even downtown. Some people have digitized some buildings and and put in a few businesses. This is by no means everything. But this is probably pretty typical of what you would see if you were to look at a town of this size within the United States. Um, I know that towns such as Altoona, Pennsylvania, nearby where I go to school, um, are, are built out to a similar degree. Um, to study this town, um, I just took the uh, OSM full history dump at the end of 2014 and also used the change set history. The change set history file is useful because it has users' comments, and that's one of the pieces of, uh, of information that I wanted to look at. Um, I clipped this data to a rectangular envelope around the city and then began to look at the nodes and ways that people added and the comments they put. Uh, clipping out the relations was a little more complicated. I don't look at them in this study. Um, but they could also provide valuable information. Uh, there's no denying that. Um, in my analysis, I, I mean, I've done plenty of this in the past, too, where uh, I've, I've counted up the nodes and ways and tried to map that. And, and that's interesting, but it also has its uh, drawbacks. Uh, you know very well that if you upload a very complicated geometry to OpenStreetMap with lots of curves, you could be uploading many, many nodes, and that could give you a distorted picture of the data. I wanted to get a little bit beyond that node and way counting and look at things such as uh, uh, those editor comments uh, that people make when saving their change sets and uh, personal profiles uh, or wiki pages that users have made where they include autobiographical information. And they talk about who they are and where they're from. And I also wanted to experiment a little bit with visualizing the data in different ways that would help provide a clearer picture of who was mapping. So if the map is crowdsourced, how big is the crowd? Uh, when we look at the crowd in Salina, uh, in history, I was able to find 58 unique contributors. And um, out of those, 
uh, 25 were active for more than one day. And uh, this is probably not a surprise uh, for those who have studied OpenStreetMap statistics. Uh, we know that a lot of users just make a couple of edits uh, that are important to them, and then they move on, either to other places or they move out of the project. I think that how to retain mappers um, is an interesting study question that maybe people in this group could tackle. Um, but when we look at ones that were retained more than five days, the crowd really diminishes. And uh, finding a consistent crowd uh, that covers the, the map on a repeated basis year by year and updates things is a big challenge in, in these areas. Um, these figures are actually not that different from ones I've seen in other cities of similar size and geography. I've looked at a couple cities in South America that are also in the Pampas region. It's kind of the, the plains of South America, very similar to, in some ways, to the Great Plains. And then in Canada, um, you'll see that it's pretty typical that 50 to 60 percent of users are only active for about for one day within the area. Um, and then when you count up the total number of person days mapped, so if a person maps for one day, you count that as one. Um, Salina is actually doing pretty well compared to some of these other towns. Uh, one thing, though, that's a challenge is if you map those person, if you graph those person days of mapping year by year, um, you see that there's not a real increase in mapping activity year by year in the smaller cities. And this is typical of all the small uh, cities that I've looked at. When you contrast that with larger cities in the same region, like Omaha or Kansas City, you see a year-by-year -year increase, typically, um, over time, of mapping activity going on within the locale. Um, but that is not the case in smaller areas. We can learn a little bit about who the top contributors are um, just by looking at things such as the number of days they were active in the map. That's how I like to rank contributors, rather than ranking them by the number of change sets that they've made. Um, some people save their work a lot and can then thereby generate many change sets. And so it's difficult to tell who is the most active mapper. Um, I didn't put user IDs here, but, um, well, I didn't put the user names, but I do have the IDs. Um, the top mapper in Salina is actually in this room. We give Toby a hand uh, for doing such a great job there. <laughs> and he is from Kansas, so there's local knowledge there in the map. I looked at his change sets, and they, are, uh, they cover all around. Lots of different things, highways, cycle paths, baseball fields, and things like that. Um, but um, actually, ma mappers like this are rare in the smaller cities. And uh, some of them, uh, it's hard to tell what they do. Uh, the second most active mapper hardly ever puts any comments in OSM, doesn't have a profile page or a wiki. I couldn't figure out very much about them at all. So, but if you look in that fourth column, the percent of users change sets here, that second place mapper does 89% of his or her change sets in this town. So we might infer that they are um, they're local to the area, or at least that's the only area that they're interested in OSM. And there's a few users on this list like that. Um, one thing that you'll notice here, I've, I've colored in the, the years that the person was active. There's only a couple of users who are active for more than one or two years in a row. And uh, retention is an issue. Um, even if you do get an active mapper, they may go away. That's something to keep an eye on. Um, I also looked through the comments and looked at the types of things people like to map. I'll talk about this later, but some, a lot of people just focus on one thing. And when you put all those things together, you get the map. Um, in Salina, that includes highways, railroads, airports, and even one person who just puts in truck stops. Maybe they're a trucker. And that would be a great thing to do if you were a trucker is to edit OpenStreetMap. Um, it's fun to visualize how much each person contributed. This is a visualization of the history of or what each user out of those 58 has done within Salina over time. The gray dots are nodes, and the green lines are ways. And the top row is the top 10 moving from left to right and going down. You'll notice that some of the less active mappers actually have a lot of nodes and ways edited on the map. So what were they doing? Um, I looked in the data, and those are mostly all related to Tiger imports or updates. So somebody could touch a lot of nodes and ways, but they may not necessarily be the most active mapper in the place in, in that they're only active for one or two days. So visualization like this is, is interesting in that you can see there's some very active mappers and very many who do um, a little bit of work, but it doesn't tell you the whole story until you really drill down in the data and you see the people um, uh, updating uh, the tiger data and so on. 
Some people just edit attributes in OpenStreetMap. They don't edit geometries at all. Um, that would show up like uh, where you see all green. That's just ways that were edited without any nodes. And I believe a lot of those are just attribute cleanup. Um, it's interesting also to map the change set bounding boxes and you begin to see the scales at which people edit OpenStreetMap. Sometimes they reveal this in the editor comments, but when you, you take the change set bounding box and you map it out like this, you see that there's some people who make edits across a national scale and then they save their work. So some people had edited Salina, Kansas, and then edited in Alaska or Hawaii as part of national level updates. Um, there's also boxes around the continental US, and as you zoom in, you can begin to see a cluster of envelopes appearing around Salina, which is the star right there. Um, what's interesting to me is the cluster of envelopes around the state. Um, I actually did run statistical uh, k-means clustering analysis on this and found that, that, that those are um, kind of separate off into their unique groups. There are some people who map at the state level and then save their edits and that becomes very clear in maps like this. I've also seen this when looking at countries in South America where I see very clear boxes appearing around Argentina, Uruguay, and so on for people who map at a regional level. And those regional level mappers may be doing quite a bit to help these small, uh, these rural areas. Um, so I see OpenStreetMap in smaller towns as kind of a crossroads where you get people coming in for many different motives, maybe one or two really, uh, really heavy duty local mappers. But why are people editing in this place if they're probably not from there? Um, I see it as kind of like the bar scene in Star Wars where you've got people coming in from all different places. And so um, I've sort of developed a, a way of thinking about different personas uh, that, that edit OpenStreetMap. And uh, perhaps this can be a place to start a conversation about that. Have I missed anybody or, or does this make sense from your understanding? So the first one is the advanced local or regional mapper. These are folks like, uh, like our friend Toby here who actually I believe these are probably some of his comments where he's doing heavy duty surveying, going out, putting in speed limits, making a ground check of the data to see if it's correct. And, um, and this is extraordinarily valuable for the map, but we know that we have a few of these in uh, the smaller towns and cities. Um, the other type is perhaps the casual visiting or visiting local mapper. So somebody who signs up for OSM and puts in one or two things that are, that are interesting for them. And sometimes their uh, local knowledge, even though they have few edits, can add a lot of richness to the map. I love this change set comment where, you know, the person has put a small business probably onto the map, a restaurant, and in the comment they put, well, this is kind of like Dairy Queen, but the prices are more reasonable. Now, that's very rich and valuable local information. Probably wouldn't ever be dug up unless you're a researcher like me looking at this data, but you know that the person really knows the place and they love it. Um, other times, maybe somebody stopped and uh, stopped at the gas station there and then decided to put it on the map. Or the final one, my house. <laughs> so their address will always be found in OSM. Um, I found that an extraordinary amount of mapping is done in OSM by hobbyists who just focus on one particular thing. Um, somebody in the opening session said that their first edit was an abandoned railroad. There's people who love to map things like that and they, they cover the entire country uh, with their mapping. And I see a lot of this passing through Salina. When I look at the comments, these are just some examples where people added airports, mines, uh, uh, features from the power grid, and uh, we can't underestimate the amount of mapping they do in rural areas that might not otherwise ever go on into the project. Um, another type is the person who is like a one-time uh, Good Samaritan fixer, where they may see something wrong, and they stop, and they help out, thank you, and they, uh, and they fix the problem. And a lot of people come on these uh, almost randomly through uh, sites like uh, uh, MapDust or MapRoulette and so on. Um, these are also provide value to the map, but um, I would say that there's probably not much uh, pride of place or even interest in the place, but more of an interest in keeping the map of high quality. And I'm not saying that's bad or good, but uh, that is a reality that um, a lot of OSM may be done by people who are not, not so much in love with the place, but they, they really care about the map. Um, Another type is uh, the map gardener. I would attribute this idea to, to Alan McConkie, who gave a talk on this a couple years ago at State of the Map, where these are the fixer-uppers in the map, and they, they tidy up the attributes to be exactly how they like. Um, they find little errors and go fix those. Perhaps they're not adding tons of new territory, but they're just making the map of higher quality. 
sort of like the Good Samaritans, but I think they spend more time in a place. And maybe they develop more attachment to a place, or they do it because they have a certain attachment. And then finally, in a similar uh, realm is the bot, where you have automated gardening of the map uh, that's done by code. And again, this code is written by human beings. It's interesting to study the social uh, aspects behind that. But we should remember that some of what we see when uh, we look at OpenStreetMap was generated by these bots. Um, another category that I did not put into this talk, but was interesting that came up this morning, is the idea of the paid mappers or the professional mappers um, that are working in the interest of some company to keep the data of high quality. Um, I did not see uh, many traces of that when I looked at the data in Salina, but I imagine that's a trend that will begin to show up, if not in, ur uh, urban area, if not in small towns, at least in urban areas pretty soon. Um, in conclusion, uh, just to summarize this, I would say that um, small cities are not gaining uh, sustained attention in OpenStreetMap like we would, uh, would want them to, or maybe not to the degree we would imagine that they are. Uh, there's, the map is built by a lot of people passing through the town uh, for various reasons, which may not have anything to do with the love of the place, but they may be motivated by keeping the map of high quality. Um, at the crossroads are coming together all these different people that I talked about, hobbyists, map gardeners, bots, and maybe even the, the paid mappers showing up in the future. And we should remember that's what we're seeing when we consider the data's fitness for use for certain projects. Finally, I have just, from what I've seen, I have a few suggestions about maybe how to improve OSM in small cities. Um, a lot of these towns uh, uh, don't have large active technical communities, but they might have community colleges or high schools that would be uh, fertile ground for finding and encouraging new OpenStreetMap users. Um, at State of the Map in Argentina, it was pretty cool. There was a group of uh, young school children from a, a rural province, and they had mapped their town in OSM with some help from the local Department of Agriculture. They actually had to have discussions about what, were, what to name the streets in the town because they had never been mapped. And so they were really on the frontier of, uh, of mapping, but the students were very enthusiastic. I've seen that as well with college students at Penn State. Um, and when we have an active OSM group that's really working well in a large urban area, maybe it would be fun to do a mapping party or a field trip where we branch out and go to surrounding areas uh, that haven't been as well mapped. In central Pennsylvania, we would probably have a good opportunity to do that. Uh, State College is beautiful in OpenStreetMap. I invite you to look at it. I didn't make it. There's a guy in our uh, program who rides his bike all over town and maps just about everything. Um, but some of the smaller towns around there are really needing some coverage. Um, and maybe that's a challenge we can make to power mappers. A lot of folks like you who do tons of mapping, look for a new place to map. There may be something uh, not as far away as you think where you could really uh, make a difference. Um, so thank you. And I think uh, we've got maybe about five minutes for questions, if there's any. Thank you. Yeah, a uh, question in the front. Uh, so, so we do a lot of work with small cities, um, mostly in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis area, where we essentially act as their GIS staff. Their cities, maybe 30,000 or less, they don't have enough work to acquire a full-time person, but we're, we're there nonetheless. So we see this huge sort of potential for data that's locked up in the city that just isn't finding its way into OSM. Um, in this particular case, did you reach out to, you know, like I'm looking at the little online GIS map for Selena and stuff that they have that maybe isn't an OSM and were those guys any of the contributors you, you listed? Good question. So is, uh, it's, uh, I'll repeat the question just for the benefit of the video, is, is there any connections between local governments that are contributions that small local governments could make into OpenStreetMap? Um, that's certainly potential if the government wants to share their data and put it online in that fashion. Um, in the towns that I've studied, including Salina, I did not see anybody commenting or contributing under a government account. But perhaps that's another persona or uh, a type of contributor that we might identify that could show up is if, if the government is a willing participant with sharing some of their data in OSM. So that's a, that's a very good point. Uh, was there a question back there? Yeah. I'm on the other side of the microphone. <laughs> yeah. Um, so earlier you mentioned that there are folks that don't reside in some of these small towns and they've been 
referred to the area through maybe applications such as Map Roulette or Map Dust. And myself, I've actually edited some rural towns within the Midwest and the South, and I was referred to it via Battle Grid, which is authored by my colleague at Telenav. So with your analysis, I was wondering, were we able to ascertain, not just within Salina, but other communities, like how these individuals were referred to the, the, these geographies to update OpenStreetMap? Good question. So uh, the question is, uh, when I saw people making um, edits through applications like Map Roulette, did I, um, did I, was I able to learn why they were directed to that town? Um, usually I, I determine that through the comment that they left in the change set. So when they press save in the editor, they can type in any comment and a lot of people would mention that I got directed here by Map Roulette or Keep Right. And I haven't used those applications extensively, so I don't, um, I, I don't have a lot of knowledge about how they guide people to certain places. Is it completely random or can you kind of determine what area you want to go to? Okay. Oh. Can anybody provide feedback about that? Is it completely random on those sites? It just sends you wherever or does it? So for Battle Grid, it's basically you know, overlaid with a bunch of grids, and then you can select a specific geography. But for Map Roulette, it's just random. OK. So some Pretty are much. random and some are, uh, uh, some are not, where you can select the geography. Uh, I hear there's a lightning talk for that yeah. coming up. Oh, great. Map Roulette for structuring focus changes in OSM. Perfect. Is that in tonight's lightning talks or tomorrow? Great. Great. Tonight. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Turn on. Um, would it be worthwhile for us to have um, a survey interface for people doing maps, like new mappers? Do you think that would be a benefit to the community if we were to collect data? And what type of data do you think we should collect to understand better why these people came to OSM? The question is, should we have a survey interface for, for new mappers asking them why they're coming to OSM? Um, you mean like a questionnaire that pops up when they start editing? What brought you here? Yeah, I mean, I guess that would be something for the community to decide is if we felt that that would, uh, would put another barrier into getting a mapper in. Like, well, I just signed up. I'm ready to edit. But start the walkthrough to do the tutorial. And well, now I have a survey I've got to answer. Or, or if that would be helpful, you know, if it was done in a few random cases. I think that's something for the, for the community to, to go over. Um, uh, that would, you know, may, pro may provide some direct feedback on, on what brought people there. And you see that a lot of time, you know, on when you sign up to buy a product and you fill out a survey, they always ask you, how did you hear about us? <laughs> I'd like to know some of those things about OSM. But my, my studies haven't gone quite to that level of why did you sign up? Um, yeah, another question. Okay, so um, for those of us who would be interested in having a little more structured approach in editing the map in some of these towns, have you compiled a list of them for, to share with those of us here at the meeting? The question is, have I compiled a list of towns that need more editing? Um, what I've started doing is because uh, I've found that I could find very little academic literature on small towns. There's a lot of them on large cities around the world. Um, so I decided to pick a handful of them that shared similar characteristics and then just drill into the data. So I've not m attempted to make any big list of uh, which towns need edited. I would answer that probably in the United States, most of them. <laughs> like maybe list the ones that don't need edited uh, where there's, there's good coverage. Um, but my goal is just to select a few and take a look at what were similar characteristics and then I've, I've summarized that, that here. And I, what I found is I think there's quite a bit of mapping that could be done uh, in these areas that might be overlooked by urban mappers. Yeah. Okay, oh, I'm being cut off. So I'd be happy to talk to you about uh, this subject uh, offline if you'd like and thank you again. <laughs>